Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, we had actually traveled back home from our little mini vacation that we went on to Georgia. I didn't have any meat thawed, but I did have just a couple of frozen country fried steak patties in my freezer that I've been wanting to use up. So I thought now was the perfect time to do that. Here's everything that I'm going to use to make dinner tonight. So I have those frozen um, steak patties. I'm going to cook those in the oven according to the package instructions. I have this packet of um, Pioneer gravy mix. I'm just going to cook that according to the package instructions. I've got some russet potatoes, a little bit of cream and butter. So I'm going to make some mashed potatoes. And then I'm going to make Mandy in the makings green beans. I've shared this before on my channel. My husband and I are not big fans of green beans. This is really the only way that I have found that we both really enjoy them. Um, so to make them, it's really easy. You only need a few ingredients. I've got some bacon, green beans. Use your favorite. I like the Italian. You need some chicken broth, or in this case, I'm going to use water and chicken bouillon, some garlic powder, salt, pepper, and then some brown sugar. And then last but not least, I've got this little can of crescent rolls that I'm going to cook up. I'll have Mandy's video linked in the description box below, but I'll quickly go over it. All you do is chop up your bacon, add it to a pot, cook it until it's crispy to your liking. Don't drain off the bacon fat. That's going to add good flavor to your green beans. Add in your drained cans of green beans, your salt, pepper, garlic powder, brown sugar, chicken stock. Um, bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and cook it for about 30 minutes. In this second pot, I've got my potatoes boiling in some salted water. Once they're tender, I will drain them and then we'll get them mashed up. All right, so for the crescent rolls, I've seen Tamara over on Southern Wife Everyday Life. I'll have her channel linked down below. I've seen her cook crescent rolls in the air fryer, and I've been wanting to try it, so I figured I'd go ahead and do it tonight. They were delicious. I will definitely make crescent rolls in the air fryer again. These were so good. So all I did was take the crescent rolls, and instead of unrolling them and then rolling them in the little triangles, you just leave the dough um, like in a full cylinder shape, and then you slice them almost like you're slicing cinnamon rolls place them into your air fryer now i did spray the bottom of my um, air fryer basket with little cooking spray um, cook them in the air fryer at 370 degrees for about three minutes give them a flip cook them for another three minutes or so until they're golden brown here are the finished green beans i would suggest you giving them a taste and adjusting the seasoning if you feel like it needs it I've got the finished country fried steak patties. Like I said, I just baked these according to the package instructions. And then for the mashed potatoes, once the potatoes were tender, I drained them really well, placed them back into the pot with some salt, pepper, butter, milk, and then used a hand mixer um, to uh, you know get them nice and fluffy. Then I've got the gravy, again, just followed the package instructions, and then the green beans and the crescent rolls. So here are the finished plates. We have everything served up. This was so delicious, so comforting. I love you know, being on vacation or going out of town and trying new restaurants and everything. But after a few days of that, I'm ready to be home and ready for some home cooking. And this totally hit the spot. For dinner the next night, I made taco pizza. Let me show you how to make this. Now, I've shared this before on my channel, but I'll quickly go through it. You don't really need a whole lot to make the actual pizza itself. It's basically just some taco meat. Now, I've used this, um, or I've made this rather, with ground turkey, ground beef. You could also do ground chicken. Either way, it doesn't really matter. You just want to brown it up and then add your taco seasoning like you would just tacos. Now, I happen to have this in my freezer where I'd made taco meat, um, I don't know, several weeks ago. I had extra, so I just froze it. And thought it you'll need some crescent rolls shredded cheese you could use whatever kind you'd like i'm using uh, cheddar tonight and then normally i just use a can of refried beans that i'll warm up but i had about half of this can of black bean dip i found this at food line it's really good but i wanted to use that up so i'm going to use that instead of the regular canned refried beans all right, so for the pizza itself, I've got my oven preheating to 375 degrees. I laid out my crescent roll dough. Now, I did only use half of the um, roll. My husband and I weren't super hungry this night. I saved the other half for something else. But I greased my cookie sheet, pinched the seams together. You can also use the um, 
like the dough sheets if you can find those. But I'm gonna place this into the oven and bake it for about 11 to 13 minutes or until it's golden brown. Now, I do like to make sure that it's a little bit crispier than what I would normally eat my crescent rolls, if that makes sense, because this is a quote unquote pizza and you're gonna pick it up and eat it. You really want them to be a little more sturdy. Next, we're going to cover the uh, crescent roll dough with the refried beans, or in my case, the black bean dip. Then add on the taco meat and shredded cheese and place this back into the oven. You just need to cook it for a couple minutes until that cheese gets melted. All right, here is everything that I'm gonna use for the pizza and the side. So I'm gonna top the pizza with some shredded iceberg lettuce, pico de gallo, some chopped up tomatoes. I just had a little tomato that I needed to use up some cilantro, green onions, and then black olives for my husband's side. And then normally I just drizzle plain sour cream over it, but I have this cilantro lime sour cream. This is really, really good. If you all see this, I found this at Publix. I would recommend it. I saw the other day that they have a couple other versions. They have like a spicy version and something else, so I want to try those as well. And then for the side tonight, I'm just going to keep it super easy. We're just going to do some vegetables. I've got some carrots, some cucumber, celery, and then homemade ranch dressing that we'll dip. All right, here is the plate. So we've got some of the pizza. I um, also ended up drizzling some of this Old El Paso taco sauce over the pizza as well. And then we've got the veggies in the ranch. This is delicious. This little taco pizza is so yummy. This would also make a really great appetizer. You just cut them up into smaller squares. For dinner the next night, I made burgers. This was not on the meal plan, but when we were in Georgia, we stopped at an Amish market and got some deli cheese and meat. And we tried some bacon cheddar slices that we hadn't tried before. And I thought those would be really delicious on burgers. So first I'm gonna start out by making like a copycat Red Robin campfire mayo. We've had several of their servers and managers tell us that their campfire mayo is just um, mayonnaise and barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna combine some mayonnaise and barbecue sauce. Just do it to your taste. Um, I've heard that it's equal parts. I've seen some recipes where it uses a little more mayonnaise, a little more barbecue sauce. Just do it to your taste, it doesn't really matter. And so I'm gonna stir it up and mix it really well and then place it into the refrigerator until I'm ready for it for dinner. I've got some roasted potatoes I need to use up, so I decided to make some homemade potato wedges. You can fry these, I like to bake them. I don't really follow a recipe, but I'll do my best to find a recipe similar to what I do and put it in the description box below. So I've washed my potatoes really, really well. You can peel them if you want, I just leave the skins on. And then I'm going to cut the potato in half and then cut each half into quarters. Now, if you have a super large potato, you might need to cut it even further. But once I've got my potatoes added um, to my bowl and they are cut up, I'm going to add a little bit of oil and then season them. As far as seasonings go, use whatever seasonings you like. I usually use salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. And then tonight I decided to add some of the uh, Badia complete seasoning as well. Season it to your taste, and then I'm gonna to toss the potatoes really, really well, and then add these to a baking sheet. Now, just to ensure they do not stick, I also spray the cooking uh, sheet with a little bit of cooking spray. You want to spread these out in a single layer, and I like to put them on the cut side down so they get really nice and crispy. These are gonna go into a preheated oven set at 400 degrees. I'm gonna bake them for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then I will flip them to the other cut side and bake them for another 15 or 20 minutes until they're tender and also crispy. Here's what I'm gonna use for the burgers. I have some lettuce, a tomato I'm gonna slice up. And then, like I said, this wasn't on the meal plan, but when I decided to make hamburgers, I had to run into Publix to get a prescription. So I just grabbed these hamburger patties as well as this half loaf of Lewis Hawaiian hamburger buns. To season up the hamburger patties, you can do it you know, however you'd like, use whatever seasonings. I'm going to use the Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse as well as the steak seasoning. Here's that cheese I mentioned. It had actual pieces of bacon in the cheese slices. It was really good. So I toasted up the buns, added just a tiny little bit of butter, cooked it on medium heat until they were brown and then removed them to a separate plate. In that same skillet, I added the hamburger patties. I seasoned both sides and then cooked them until they were done to our liking. 
Once they were there, I added a slice of cheese and turned the heat off and then just allowed that cheese to melt. And then here are the burgers as well as the potato wedges. Here are the finished plates. So we've got the wedges along with some of the campfire mayo to dip the wedges in. And then for the burgers, I mentioned this before, but my husband and I are complete opposites when it comes to sandwiches and burgers and everything. I like things really simple. He pretty much adds everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> so for my burger, I just had a tiny little bit of mayonnaise, some ketchup, mustard, pickle, and tomato. For him, he had mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, pickle, lettuce, tomato, and I think that was it for today. But these were delicious. Those burgers had so much flavor. Th that cheese on the burgers was so yummy. And the potato wedges and the campfire mayo, just delicious. Now for the next day, for some weird reason, I had a strong hankering for cheese sticks and then a Philly cheesesteak pizza. I don't know where that craving came from, <laughs> but I asked my husband, I was like, can we please order pizza tonight? So we ordered from Papa John's. We got a medium, my husband calls it a garbage pizza, um, but pretty much we just order, I think it's called the works and we don't get sausage or onions. And instead we add pineapple and banana peppers for um, my husband. He really likes that. And then I got their Philly cheesesteak pizza just with no bell peppers and added mushrooms instead. And then we got their, I believe the Tuscan six cheese cheese sticks or something like that. And we had tons of pizza. We ate pizza like, for the next two or three days. Um, but it was really nice not to cook that night for dinner. For dinner the next night, I made chicken parmesan. Now, I've shared various forms of making chicken parmesan before on my channel. I do it differently. Sometimes I use just like frozen chicken patties that are already breaded. Um, the Aldi red bag chicken is really great for that. And then I just cook it according to the package instructions add some pasta sauce and cheese. Sometimes I take chicken breasts and then just dip them in a little butter and breadcrumbs and bake the chicken and then add the sauce. Tonight I decided to make it uh, more the traditional way, so to make cutlets. So here's what I'm gonna use to make it. I have my chicken breasts. Now I took just regular chicken breasts, cut them in half um, horizontally and then pounded them out to an even thickness, seasoned them with some salt and pepper. And then I have my breading station set up. So I have some just all purpose flour that I seasoned with some salt and pepper. Then in the next container, I've got a couple of eggs that I beat together with just about a tablespoon or so of water. And then in this third container, I have equal parts of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs as well as grated Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna do is take the chicken, um, dip both sides into the flour, kind of shake off the excess, dip it into the egg, dip it into the breadcrumbs, and then we'll get it fried up. I've got some oil in my skillet and it's heating up on about medium heat. Once it's good and warm, I'm going to add in my chicken that I've breaded. And you may need to do this in batches. You want to give your chicken some room. You don't want to crowd the pan. And then you just want to cook this for, I mean, it depends on how thick your chicken is. I would say maybe four to five minutes per side or until it is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Make sure you flip it halfway through so both sides get golden brown. My oven is preheating to 400 degrees. I've sprayed my baking dish with some cooking spray and then added a layer of pasta sauce to the bottom. I'm using this Rouse. I got a twin pack at Sam's Club and we've really been enjoying this, um, but I know it is really pretty pricey. So of course, use whatever brand you prefer. You could also make homemade sauce. So I'm gonna add my chicken cutlets to the sauce. And then once all of them are done, I'm going to top the chicken cutlets with the rest of the pasta sauce. And we like it pretty saucy. Plus, we like to serve it over pasta. So I'm going to spread the sauce out a little bit. And then I have just a little bit of this shredded Parmesan cheese in this bag I want to use up. So I'm going to sprinkle that over the chicken and then add some shredded mozzarella cheese. And then this is going to go into the preheated oven. And you really only need to bake this for, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes or so. You just want to get that cheese melted and a little bit golden brown. Here's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. I did garnish it with some fresh basil. And then, like I said, we like to serve it over pasta. So I just cooked up some spaghetti noodles according to the package instructions. Here are the plates. So we've got some of the pasta, the chicken parm Parmesan. And then for the side salad, I just did a simple salad with some arugula, some cranberries, dried cranberries, some um, 
pecans and then a little feta cheese crumble that I had in the refrigerator and we'll top it with a little vinaigrette and this was delicious that chicken parmesan is so so good so tender and flavorful I love making this it's really good you know either way like I said you make it whether you use frozen patties or you bake it but the the chicken cutlets like this skillet fried and then finished in the oven is so yummy for dinner the next night, I didn't get a picture, but we just had leftovers. I believe I had some of the leftover Papa John's pizza this night, and I believe my husband had leftover chicken parmesan. For the last dinner in this week's video, I made smothered beef burritos. I've mentioned several times before my channel, but it's been a while, that there used to be a restaurant here in town that made uh, this burrito. I can't even remember now what it was called, but the inside of the burrito was like a Spanish style rice, refried beans, cheese, and then carnitas. And then they smothered it in queso. Oh my gosh, it was flipping delicious. Um, but they closed down during the p word um and so i try to make it whenever i'm craving it but i had some shredded beef in my freezer i'd made shredded beef tacos a few weeks back and had extra meat i'll try to find that video and link it down below and so i decided to make like a shredded beef version instead of pork so here's everything that i'm going to use to make the burritos we of course need tortillas for the burritos. I'm gonna use a burrito size for Gary, and then I wasn't super hungry this night, so I'm just gonna use a soft taco size for myself. And then we have the shredded beef that I mentioned. I just thawed this, um, and then I'll heat it up in the microwave. For the cheese, uh, you can use Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, whatever you like. I had a little bit of shredded mozzarella, so I'm gonna use that. And then I've got these refried beans. I'm gonna warm those up. I'll show you how I do that in just a second. For the rice, I'm using this Spanish style ready rice. I'm gonna pop that in the microwave. And then warm up this Gordo's cheese dip to smother the burrito. And then I like to um, garnish it with some guacamole and pico de gallo. Now, of course, you can, you know, make your own Spanish rice, make your own guacamole, your own pico. But tonight I was just going for easy. So I'm using the pre-made versions. For the refried beans, I'll link the recipe that I've used for years in the description box below. They're called like restaurant style. I don't know if this is what typically gets used in restaurants, but I do know they taste really similar to the refried beans that I eat at um, Mexican restaurants. So all I've done is in this little pot, I've added the refried beans and then you add sour cream, some hot sauce, and then I add a little salt and you just cook this on low until they are warmed through and then you can top it with cheese. For the burritos, I um, placed the tortillas in the microwave for about 20 seconds to warm them up. I laid down a bed of the uh, warmed up rice, the refried beans, the warmed up shredded beef, and then the cheese. I'm gonna roll those up. And then you don't have to do this, but I like to toast them in a skillet over the stove. I did let the tops get a little extra toasted, but that was fine. They still tasted delicious. All right, here are the plates. So for Gary's plate, I held off on adding like the sour cream and guacamole and pico to his because he was at the gym when I started eating dinner. And just in case it was cold and needed to be heated up, I, I you know, I just left that off for now. Um, but we've got the rice, the beans, the burritos with the queso and then like I mentioned the guacamole and pico these were delicious so so yummy this is really one of my favorite meals all right that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching I hope that this gave you some dinner inspiration if you liked this video please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I hope you have a really great rest of the day thanks so much for watching Bye bye